So, uh, we went viral. Yay! Apparently more than 10 million people have seen this. That's... that's more than the population of Sweden. And now that we're famous and have millions of hardcore fans... Hardcore? We're gonna show you how to turn your PS5 from this to this. Let's do it! So first we load Kaiba into our 3D printing software. Kaiba! Okay, so it's it's a bit small. We can fix this. We can fix this. Okay, that's better. So now I just have to orient him the right way and perfect. That is exactly how I want it. Okay, he's ready. I'll see you in two days. Okay, for real this time. Those of you with 3D printers, here are my settings to get the perfect type of head. Those of you without, just sit tight. So you might be wondering, why does he look like a penis? I wasn't, I wasn't wondering that at all. Well, since you asked, let me show you with pictures. Bloop! So here's what you want Kaiba to look like. He's handsome, he's rich, he has money. But when you're 3D printing, you're actually stacking super thin layers on top of each other, like so. And these layers are about 0.2 millimeters high. But when you get to Kaiba's chin and his hair, you're stacking larger layers on top of smaller layers, and it starts to droop. And if you keep adding droopy layers on top of droopy layers, you eventually get this. This Kaiba is sad and has no money. To avoid this, we'll be printing with supports. So when the print starts, we'll also be adding tiny pillars on the side that can be used to support Kaiba's chin and hair. And as we keep printing, our supports get taller and taller to make sure that Kaiba stands firm and erect, like a penis. Now let's remove the supports. The supports break off pretty easily, but we still should be careful not to damage Kaiba's hair. Supports are gone, and now we're ready for sanding. All right, moving on to the next step, I'll be sanding down some rough bumps left behind by the supports. I'm just using some metal files in various shapes, but sandpaper will work too. Okay, let's see how it looks. Give them a twirl, and I think this looks pretty good for now. Next, we're moving on to painting. There's just a few things I'm going to be changing in the process compared to how I painted the prototype, but overall the look will be similar. For tools, I'll be using a wet palette, a small medium sized flat brush, and a round size 2 Series 7 Windsor & Newton brush that I totally stole from my boyfriend. <laughs> um, the first thing I'll be painting is Kaiba's eyes. I'm taking a bit of Citadel Stegadon Scale Green and I'm slowly painting in some half ovals to create the base of his infamous glare. Looking good. Now I'm taking some white scar and painting in some smaller half ovals to create that iconic Yu-Gi-Oh style eye. Then I'm painting a thin half ring under it. Yep, looks pretty clean. I'm just adding another coat of white and now I'm going to use some rust gray and paint a few layers over the thin white ring. To finish up the inner eyes, I'm dipping back into white and painting two little shinies at the edges of his irises. Next, I'm using Abaddon Black to line his eyelids and outer corners to complete his sharp, icy look.
I'm just going to dip back into white to clean up the edges a little bit. And now his eyes are complete. I'm introducing a small flat brush to paint in his turtleneck collar into the same black I just used for the eyes. Moving on, I'm using the color XV88 in the flat brushes to cover his entire hair. Maho Yojo! Bam, now it's dry. As you can see, one coat of paint isn't enough. There's quite a few patches where the color shows up lighter than the other areas, so I'm going to give this a second layer. Doopity doo! Now that the second coat is dry, I can show you the difference between one coat and two coats of paint. It's so much smoother on Pale Kaiba. Here I'm just going to clean up his face a bit to prep his skin using a little white again. For his skin tone, I'm going to be mixing a little Flash Gets Yellow and some Wild Rider Red and a good amount of White Scar to mix a light yellow custard. Then I'm applying it to his face, neck, and ears. For shading, I'm taking Raikland Flesh Shade and applying it under his nose, the corners of his mouth, under the lower lip, under the chin, under the bangs, and the details of his ears. Now I'm going back to black with the tip of my round brush, and I'm just going to very carefully draw a thin line for his pout, and then pick up the skin tone to clean up the line. To finish, I'm using 8V88 again to go over any light spots I left on his hair. And now, we're finally finished! Look at this handsome grumpy bastard! So handsome. So grumpy. So bastard. <laughs>